just from a practical uh, aspect here, anytime you start talking about crude oil, most of the American people think about gasoline prices. Uh, that's why it's, it's more volatile, I think, when you talk about exporting crude oil than certainly natural gas or something like that. Do any of you uh, have an opinion on, if you were at a Rotary Club, how you would explain that exporting additional crude oil uh, would not necessarily raise gasoline prices? Mr. Sminsky. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, it's, it's always a challenge. Usually at those Rotary Club functions, I get asked why gasoline prices are so high. Uh, lately, I haven't gotten that question. <laughs> Right. Uh, I, EIA has has uh, tried to examine uh, your question uh, from the standpoint of how uh, gasoline prices uh, are set in the U.S. markets and what gasoline prices relate to. And what we found in a study that we published uh, just a short while ago uh, was that. Uh, that these two benchmark crudes that I talked about, the one in the U.S., WTI, West Texas, and Brent uh, in the international markets, that gasoline prices uh, it historically tend to be much more closely related to Brent crude oil prices than to the domestic benchmark. The second thing that we found uh, was that uh, U.S. gasoline prices tend to be uh, more closely related to gasoline prices in markets like uh, Singapore and Rotterdam in the global markets uh, than uh, to uh, comparing, let's say, Chicago prices with prices in the Gulf Coast. The, the conclusion that one would draw from that is that, uh, that gasoline prices, because we are exporting and importing so much gasoline, uh, it, are really set in the global markets. There's one market, gasoline prices in the U.S. tend to reflect that global market, and that, uh, that if exports of crude oil resulted in higher prices for West Texas Intermediate or crudes that are benchmarked to that uh, would not have uh, much impact uh, on gasoline yeah. prices. And it, I'm glad you mentioned we're already exporting gasoline anyway, so. When we're talking about quite a bit, oil. actually. Yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> right. Did you have a comment? Yes, yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, but I think you know how I would explain it is that if you want to constrain volatility in the market, if you want to constrain rising gasoline prices, you should promote a very stable and growing production of crude oil in North America. Right. And we have evidence that this is having a big effect. And that's the answer. We're, as Adam said, we're well integrated into the world oil market. The only thing we can, what we can do is have a stable growing production of crude oil right. outside of these more volatile areas. Right. You, you have a comment, Dr. Evans? If I could just add, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think an easy way to look at this is since, uh, as Mr. Shemisky said, gasoline prices are predominantly set in the international market, if we have a set volume of crude oil in that market and all of a sudden we put more oil into that market, uh, adding to supply while demand stays relatively constant uh, on the basis of fun kind of fundamental economics, more supply, constant demand, prices should come down. Uh, and then refiners buying that oil around the world will, in theory at least, if they wish to be competitive, will uh, uh, lower their product, petroleum product prices, including gasoline, and hopefully for New England, maybe home heating fuel. Uh, I think that's, that's the way I find sometimes trying to explain it seems to have some salience. Okay. Ms. Gordon, do you have a comment? Yeah, I don't know that it would be easy for consumers to understand this, but because oils are so different, the oils that we are largely now set to refine, the heavier oils, don't preferentially make more gasoline, they make more diesel. So the oils that we're now looking to export, the light tight oils, those do, they're lighter oils, they go through hydroskimming refineries, they make more gasoline. So we might be getting ready to export the perfect oil to make more gasoline in order to keep and refine the oil that makes more diesel. It's not a consumer issue then because our consuming public doesn't use diesel, they use gasoline. So the, it <coughs> gets a little bit complicated here yeah. and the big question that, that Lou raised was volatility. I think that consumers are gonna need to understand 
in the future possibly not be explained high prices, but volatile prices. And volatility will really hurt America because we are equal and large parts consumer and producer of right. oil and product, that if the markets become very volatile, we're going to hurt more than anyone else. Okay. Well, my time's expired.